lot to offer, so I hope you guys get a lot from this event. So, music has always been a big part of your life. Do you come from a musical family? I did. In fact, um, my grandfather, from my dad's side, he was a pianist. He used to play in one of those old uh, school dance bands. Um, when I mean old school, I don't mean old school, as in from that <laughs> past era. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which was apparently quite a famous band on the reef during the sort of mining era in the early wow. 1900s. And he was also a pianist in the sound of movies in the uh, Jersey oh. Opera House. Oh, wow. So, That's yeah, awesome. I almost can't even relate, but I never got to meet him. But it's um, just in the blood. It's in the blood, I've got his piano, which is oh. such an amazing oh. asset. Wow. Two, five and three centimeters. Oh, my yeah. word. And it's, all, it's on my mom's side, too, you know. There's a lot of Welsh blood flowing through the veins, so I think that kind of translates into some kind of musicality. Mm. And yeah, it's just always been there. And my grandmother was, um, my mom's mom was um, very much into theatre and production, and she used to put on shows and mm. um, train uh, theatre students at oh, education. So that all, I think, sort of translated into making who I am today. Yes, yeah. And then you started playing piano at three and then you started to study formally uh, or music at five. How did it feel to be so young and yet so dedicated to your craft? It didn't even feel like it was a, a sense of dedication. It was just a natural progression where I was just loving it so much mm. that it just um, unfolded in this passionate experience of uh, music and, mm. and I was lucky I suppose to have all the right people along the way to just nudge me and guide me in the right yeah. direction. But um, yeah, it was all very organic. Uh, I, so I did you sat, just... Yeah, no, I sat down. Ah, oh, and then they just and noticed fiddled, you. And oh. suddenly I was making little compositions and my mother was going, oh, that's kind of not really what three-year-olds do. No, <laughs> yeah. And then she yeah. waited until I was old enough to um, the cognitive of, you know, letters notes. and notes mm -hmm. and be able to sit still for yeah. more than 15 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then I started uh, wow. uh, training with a music teacher and then uh, had a couple of bad experiences with some rather viciously disciplinarian type strict yeah. uh, tutors that almost could have broken you know, my love for music. Yeah. So I stumbled upon the dead point. Yeah, can you tell me about her yeah. and journey with her? She was, I was at a convent in Woodbank um, and music was a very much part of the culture there and I think it was also indicative of schooling in that era where mm. music was very central to, to schools, curriculum, etc. But at the convent it was everything revolved around music, mm. from the masses to the concerts to the assemblies. And she was the, the music teacher there and my mom thought, well, perhaps let's give it a go in terms of, you know, sending Wendy for legs. Yeah. And I was so lucky because she was a real eccentric German <laughs> nun. She was probably yay nun. Oh, cute! <laughs> and she was so playful and so enthusiastic and so free-spirited, which is exactly what I needed. Mm -hmm. And because I play by ear, um, I often would get very distracted mm -hmm. from the formal sort of material where you'd have to practice the Trinity of London exams and I'd go, hey sister, check this out, and I'd mm -hmm. translate or a blues or a jazz number that I'd heard and play for her. She loved it, so she would let me almost play a whole portion of my lesson. Wow. Uh, just, you know, faffing around with my That's latest so composition. important. Yeah. But when I look back now, I think perhaps she should have given me a little bit more discipline on the scales and such. <laughs> <laughs> That and gave me mm. an opportunity to just e experiment, improvise, and, and just go, yeah. and be free, and uh, mm. and then let me showcase and play that for assembly, and you know, yeah. play that for the concerts, and it was it was so, it was just so perfect for that point in my life. And then, where did your passion for jazz and blues come from? It's just in the blood. <laughs> I could never explain it. I mean, yeah, my dad would always have his radio playing, and he obviously had an inclination to that too. Mm. Um, and my grandfather, I said he passed away before I met him, but he left a massive collection of those old LP records in my dad's um, cupboard. And I discovered these and I figured out how to use them. 
the gramophone player. Yeah, yeah. And I'd spend hours and hours just going through all of them and listening because every time I heard that kind of music, something in me stirred, something in me resonated with that more so than any other music. I mean, I really love and respect all genres of music, mm. but that just does something for you. Want to yeah. I want to know how to play that. I want to sing that. I want to. I could just envisage myself immersed in that kind of music. Mm. So it was just a natural. Your friends and family were your first audience. Could you share one of your stories about your sing-alongs or uh, your stand-up comedy moments? <laughs> <laughs> I think that probably was thanks to my grandmother. Oh, cool! Uh, because she, uh, she really, I put on little concerts for her at the end of each school holiday. I spent a lot of time with my grandparents on the Citrus Farm in Fortress Dog, mm -hmm. um, and she encouraged that and nurtured that. Mm -hmm. And um, it all happened. We had these feast days at school. Um, we they put out concerts and would be a variety concert and folk okay, would cool. stand up on stage and do whatever they needed to do. Yeah, that's it. So. <laughs> yeah. And no one saw it coming, but my grand used to tell me all sorts of funny jokes and I used to memorize them and then I would I loved accents and I loved, you know, mimicking and and oh, and being a bit cool. of a clown. And uh, I didn't tell anybody, I didn't even tell my mother, I didn't even tell my sister. Oh, I got up on stage for this piece. <laughs> wig on my head and people didn't know who I was and oh, I still didn't know who it was and suddenly I started rattling off all these jokes in different accents that my grandmother had taught me oh, wow. and I had such an amazing response the entire school was collapsing on the <laughs> Great. I like, Gee, I like this. This is, this is fun. fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's, uh, that kind of sparked mm. the whole more theatrical side of me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I must say I I just, I think I, I enjoy doing it more so for friends and family because when mm. it's spontaneous and yes. in the moment um, mm. I feel like more relaxed when somebody says, come on, do that thing, I was like, no, no, <laughs> yeah, no. It's yeah. got to be a very much organic yeah. process, but it comes to on stage, so you know, mm. yeah, when you, you chat through, through the, the, yeah. the, the audience, that will translate in, in terms of a little bit of a tease here and a rip somebody off and a bit of an yes. accent and a joke here and there. And very much a part of my personality. You know, yes, I'm known for, painful, you know? I'm known for taking off accents and characters and life. And you started gigging at 15. What did you learn from that experience? It was an incredible experience from the point of view where you learned um, how, how tough it is, really, mm -hmm. um, in terms of getting going, finding a place to have an audience or find a venue that's prepared to have you come and perform with zero experience. Yeah, yeah. Getting the equipment, building up the repertoire, finding the money to buy the equipment. Um, but it's amazing that when you're young, you almost just have such a bold, courageous approach to love that nothing really keeps you down. No, you're like, okay, well, that's just what I'm going to do. No problem. We, you, know, you want us for New Year's Eve? That's in a week's time, and we have no equipment, and we have no repertoire, but we're not going to tell you that. Yes! Just, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you! That's exactly what happened. Yeah, wow! That it is... Woo! <laughs> two guys from Varsity, and they come through to Whitbank, where my hometown was for mm. the holidays. And I had um, I had a keyboard, and we kind of got together and said, well, let's make music. And we got a New Year's Eve gig, and we, um, wow. we made it happen, and that yeah. got the ball rolling. Where we invested time, we invested energy, we invested money, and mm. the infrastructure to make it happen. And then slowly, folks started asking us to call the functions, and mm. that was the learning curve. We're just learning what it, what is required. Do you enjoy singing standards or original music more, or is it pretty equal? I think that's changed only of late for me, because mm. in the beginning. I only wanted to sing standards. Mm. I, don't, I felt like I just didn't have um, sufficient material really to be standing up there and doing my own thing. But it also translated into the thing of me not feeling confident enough to compose. Mm. It was the weirdest thing when I was younger, I would compose extensively, but I would almost complicate the, the composition where I would pack every I had a trick in, yeah. into that one thing and it would just become overwhelming. Like, oh, that's really nice, but it's kind of really off the wall at the same time. <laughs> yeah. and I, I kind of packed that away mm -hmm. and immersed myself more so in just 
the, the standards and doing other folks' renditions, mm -hmm. but doing it my way. Yeah. Um, that's where I get the kick. Mm -hmm. We'll translate it into something that is more of an extension of my vocal style and my personality. Yes. Yeah. But it's thanks to Graham. Um, now that we are pushing to get more of our original material, because the sad thing is that folks don't tend to take you seriously as a musician until you actually produce your own work. Mm. Um, and now that we've collaborated and we've co written on a number of um, songs, it's, it's opened up and unleashed the, that composition yeah. aspect of my skills, which I I, mean, I, I kind of almost just picked away, perhaps for my sense of insecurity more so than mm -hmm. anything else. Now I'm feeling like I'm flexing that muscle and I can do this, yes. And then when it translates into a complete product, it's the most satisfying experience that you can even... It's like giving yeah. birth. It is! You know? Yes, the songs become your babies, they really do. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so that's, it's come late for me. Mm -hmm. um, but so be it, you know, it's part Everybody's of, it's part of different. my yeah. journey and mm. maybe I was only ready to really tap into that part of mm. my musicality. Well, you've learnt a lot um, on your road to get to here, so that now when you are composing songs, you know exactly what you want. That's right. You're very focused. That's yeah. right. Yeah. You got your Bachelor of Science degree in chemistry and then you uh, moved on to you tried different things and been avenues for a while. And then you came back full swing to music. What made you make that transition to say, no, I'm really focusing on music now? Once again, just something within me. It's, I cannot deny this part of my personality, of my essence mm -hmm. beyond the way. I just felt, yeah, I was on the road to a pretty serious corporate career. Mm -hmm. because I came from advice um, to teaching and then teaching and learning design. And uh, it was very tempting. And I probably would have been sitting quite pretty in this sort of conventional um, yes, context yeah. of things. Climbing like the ladder. I couldn't. Mm. I just couldn't. And um, I thought, I've got to get back to this now. Mm. And uh, yeah, full, full circle came right back to it and started off. It was a very different scene from when I was gigging as a, a teenager and a student. Yeah. Because now I really wanted this to translate from a hobby into something substantial. serious and substantial. Yeah. Um, and there I really had to start networking. I mean, it's all about the right, knowing the right people mm. and making your presence known and just mm. knocking the doors, knocking the doors, knocking the doors until eventually you form a network and a, you know, a good relationship with folks in the industry. And mm. that's what it's about. It's like every yeah. time it's yeah. about relationships. And then how did you even start that? I mean, you had the intention that you wanted to work with uh, some of the best jazz musicians in the country. So, where did you begin? I mean, did you just think, well, that person's really great. Uh, how do I get to one of these shows? I mean, how did you do that? Well, I must say, I think that it was serendipitous. And I think it was all synchronicity at play, as it, as, as it always is, isn't it? Yeah. Where there was an opportunity in my teaching where I taught uh, young, my, one of my first pupils, very neat and underwent. Oh, OK. Yeah. And um, at a parents' evening, my very first parents' evening, and her dad sat down, Denny Lillard, mm. with her mom. And I didn't know the extent of his musicality and his brilliance as a, as a professional musician. But um, we, we got to know that her dad performed, and my then um, ex husband, or husband, ex husband, and I started going off to watch them perform. Mm. And I was really hungry to just, you know sample some really good musicality, good music and of course jazz. Yeah, yeah. And so a relationship started forming um, where we eventually said to him, um, he, my husband said, I'd love to learn the bass. And he said, well, you know, maybe we can give Veronique extra maths lessons and you can... <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> great, it's great, great. Yeah. And I formed a great relationship with the family and um, as the years progressed, Veronique and I then started to sing together. When I left teaching, I was asked to put on a production um, featuring the Andrew Sisters material. Yes, yeah. And there was it was with a friend and my and myself. We both loved harmonising and singing songs together. But there were three Andrew Sisters, and there were only two of us. <laughs> yeah. So um. <laughs> and, and once again, someone said, "Look, we've got a soiree. We what, come and come and do that thing." 
come and sing Andrew's, your Andrew's sister's material. But I said, well, let's, we sing the songs, but it's only two of us. I said, well, we'll give you three months. Here's a date. Come and perform. Yeah, just do it. Yeah. And once again, as a young, enthusiastic, sometimes stupid, <laughs> youth. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, to say that to me, I'm like, absolutely not. Yes. Just, you know, that's not feasible. Oh, man. And I did, and I thought, God, I'm not going to ask to sing with us. So um, I asked Veronique, she just matriculated, she was out of school for the mm -hmm. first year, and she was also embarking on her music career. Mm -hmm. And I said, would you like to come and join us? We're going to kind of put a whole bunch of songs together for the soiree, mm -hmm. and let's see what happens. And the blend between the three of us was perfect oh, and great yeah we really just had a great um kind of chemistry chemistry that's mm. great, thank you <laughs> and um so we put this production on and it went down like a, you know it went down so well folks loved it and then we started thinking well let's take this further so then we got we said uh, we need a bass player we need a drummer we need a saxophonist mm. and we were going to make it an all girls team so oh, it was going to be wow. all girls, yeah. backing, etc. But we were struggling to find players. Hmm. And we were often rehearsing at Denny and Elisa's home. And then Denny said, but what about me? And, and you're said, like, what? Oh, and you're like, no, you're kidding me. You, 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 you want to come and wow. play with us? And he said, of course, why not? He said, I'm hearing you guys rehearse this all the time. Yeah. And with him came Neil Etridge on drums. Oh, who was also word. cute. Brendan Ross on sax. Danny Bow on trumpet. And the beauty of it was it wasn't a production where somebody had created this scenario or this concept and then you go and employ the musicians to come and play. Yes, it. yeah. It was collectively our baby and it still mm. is where we don't perform it often. But everybody came and contributed their bit and we're all equals in the production process. Mm. We now managed and directed it, but everybody felt like this was our project as opposed to my project and you guys do what I say. Yes, um, yeah. And as a result, we have had 15 years wow. of just the biggest ball of fun when it comes to performing with stuff because it's just sentimental. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a big band because it's three girls and five uh, band members. Mm. But um, so folks don't often get an opportunity to finance a production like that. But mm. we mm. do get a chance to Boy oh boy do we have fun. Oh, awesome man. Eh? The real it's a family. You know, yeah. a family of musicians. And through that I then got to know <laughs> Denny, I got to know Neil, I got to know a number of the musicians in the mm -hmm. industry. And once again, youth is a great thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to start my own jazz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool. And then there we go. Atmosphere. And I I approached them. Mm. I didn't I didn't know what they'd say. And they said, sure, no problem. And wow. then we started off, um, mm -hmm. I was accompanied probably by three of the top jazz musicians, was Abzal Ishmael, Denny oh. Lalouette, and, and Neil Etridge, and then sometimes we had Brandon on sax. Mm -hmm. And um, that was the beginning of my very big step into wow. the professional performance industry. Mm -hmm. And I was so blessed because to get thrown into the deep end, where really you like you have to up your game so fast to be yeah. able to perform with the likes of those guys. Yeah, but what was just amazing was their humility, their yes. supreme professionalism. Where you know that's the one thing I know. Danny always says you respect the music no matter what it is. You play it with passion and vigor mm -hmm. and enthusiasm because there's no one thing that's better than another. Mm -hmm. And that's such a good lesson to learn. Yes, there. yeah, you know. Um, do it when you play, when you, play yeah. you play, no matter what music you're playing. And yeah. It was just, it was such a golden opportunity to launch myself into that circle of folk where I could then start, can I pick your brain, what do you think of this? Yes. And, and just yeah. learning from all these amazing musicians. Oh, wow. Close.